Okay, our next speaker is a former colleague at RTE, subsequently a political advisor to Ethna Fitzgerald when she was drawing up the Freedom of Information legislation, among other things, and then a Labour Party senator, uh, and has been with the Irish Cancer Society now since 2000 and 2008, where she is Head of Advocacy and Communications. Now, to talk about how the sector is and can help itself, Kathleen O'Mara. Now, oh, there's nowhere to leave the glass of water. I hope it doesn't fall off. Uh, thanks very much. And um, Ivan asked me to speak about how the sector is helping itself to recover and to build trust with the public in the aftermath of what has become known as the charity scandals uh, of 2013 and 2014. And I think undoubtedly the place to start is with a question. Is the sector helping itself? And I think helping itself is the key phrase here. And I'll come back to that. So first, the question. Are we doing enough to rebuild trust? Are we taking the actions designed specifically to rebuild that trust which was lost over that period of weeks. And, you know, I don't think any of us like to remember it, but the thing is we should and we need to reflect on it. Now, I can't answer the question for all of you. And time didn't allow me to survey all the 8,500 registered charities in Ireland. But what I did do was I took a very quick and unscientific look at the websites of 20 charities. I took a sample of 20 Irish charity websites uh, to see if I could see evidence of an effort to generate greater transparency. And um, I used websites because clearly they're our shop window now. They are the first place that people will go to find out about us. They can look at it on the phone, you know, they can just look at it so easily. Now, in particular, what I was looking for, for was information on how the money is being spent, since this is the key issue, not only for the media, but for the public. So the result of that, now I'm not going to name and shame, right? That <laughs> it wouldn't be fair, let me just tell you that the charities ranged from religious charities to third world charities, to, from health charities to housing charities, and all would be well known. Okay, all would be well known. So, money featured very strongly on nearly all the front pages of the websites, but you've probably guessed that that was because all the charities were looking for money. So we're very clear, we are all very clear with the public that we want them to give us money. So, wh what we're not so very clear about, however, is what we spend it on. And, you know, and that's what I'm really going to put to you today. You could find out the information if you went to the About Us section on the website, and then you're usually sent to something called Governance, and then you're usually sent, to, which brings you up the Board of Directors, and then in many cases you're sent to the Annual Report, mostly in a PDF version, and then you might get something called the consolid financial Consolidated Financial Statement, can't even pronounce it, uh, alongside the uh, annual report. And you, if not, you had to scroll down to the annual report uh, on the PDF before you could finally discover what the money is being spent on. Now, three of the 20 didn't give any financial information, like none at all. They, told us about themselves and so on, but they never talked about money. They didn't say how much they raised. They didn't talk, say who funded them. They didn't say what the money was spent on. And then I maybe thought, well, maybe they don't need money, but no, they looked for donations. So maybe they did mention money from that point of view. So is the sector helping itself? Yes, I think it is, because annual reports and financial statements are very important. And I know from my own experience that, you know, up to a number of years ago, certainly, even that you couldn't find on a website. You couldn't find an annual report, and you certainly couldn't find a financial statement. Um, but they are very important, but they're certainly not enough in this day and age, in my opinion, particularly considering what we've, we've gone through. So, and we have to accept that none of us is immune from this kind of representation of us. This is an Irish Times um, cartoon from the, the time of the, the scandals. Um, so, at the very least, there must be a heightened awareness for us all that we have to work hard and we certainly have to do more to keep the trust of the public. I hope we're not doing this. But we are human. We are human. And our instinct, when something happens, and I know this myself, I kind of think, oh my God, I hope it doesn't land on my desk. I certainly hope it doesn't land on my desk. I hope it doesn't happen to me. Um, you know, we, we are inclined to think this. This has nothing to do with me. Um, and I think my sense, however, is that we all knew at the time it had something to do with us and that it would require us to do something someday. Um, 
But when the government response then was to appoint a charities regulator, I think many of us breathed a sigh of relief because we thought, the sheriff is in town. <laughs> Dodge City now has a sheriff, which of course, you know, makes you think, well, what was Dodge City like before the sheriff arrived? So, but the thing is that, and I hear this in conversations, and I've, hear, I've heard this in the background here even today, that simply having a charities regulator means that the public just will automatically start trusting us again. So who thinks that the appointment of a charities regulator has effectively solved all our problems? Please don't say yes. That simply being registered makes us all pure as the driven snow. Well, it won't handle, Una is not going to be able to handle everything, right? We all know she's highly competent and effective. But all those nasty things that came up in the media there, you know, back in 2013, 2014, do we think that in future the regulator is going to handle all that? Well, because if you're assuming that, then I have bad news for you. Because simply having a regulator isn't going to protect us. Now, that's not the regulator, by the way. That's David, <laughs> right? And his colleagues. That's the media. And like he said, I'm a former journalist myself. We're the red meat, okay? So just, just give me the, let me give you this example. About a month ago, Friday, April 17th, I was driving home. I was in my car. I had the radio on as usual and drive time. And I heard a very worrying headline on the radio news. Only 200 charities have registered with the charities re regulator ahead of the deadline. I thought, oh my God, what's going on? What is going on? The item continued. I heard Joe Little report that, in fact, the Minister for Justice had extended a deadline for registration with the charities regulator and that, you know, the 200 referred to were not the main body. And, you know, we now know this. I don't explain it because Una just explained it. It was, was just as well she, she spoke ahead of me, really. Um, but I'm in a position to understand these things. But what worried me was that for the ordinary listener, what they're left with is the impression that somehow charities are not complying with the law. So that makes us what? Lazy, inefficient, not to be trusted. Of course, that wasn't the full story at all. And Ivan, I don't know if he's in the room, Ivan came to the rescue on the 6-1 News that same evening and handled the story very well, in fact. But what we have to really understand for ourselves is how the media works and that media, ex 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 saving your presence, uh, David, but the media is generally hostile. And, you know, that is something that's really changed, and I think that's what we have to deal with. The media is generally hostile. So what do you do then when the predators are around? You protect yourself, is what you do. You do not leave yourself exposed to the wolves, uh, which is what being the target of hostile media attention can feel like, right? You go on the training courses, especially, the, you know, you go on the wheel training courses, uh, you, you, you do a media plan. You certainly have to be ready and prepared and you have to have a strategy. You just, you know, you have to have your crisis communications plan in the top drawer, uh, you know, and you have to have your all, everything that goes with that. And I know a lot of people have been going on training courses. I've looked at the figures, but not everybody by the sound of things, considering there is so many registered charities. So being transparent, and this has been said before, it will protect you. Because when you're being transparent, it's clear you have nothing to hide. So what does real transparency look like? Now, I, I actually, I plan to do that differently, so I hope you can see it. Um, I wanted to kind of like do each one separately. So I've actually put up our own website, the Irish Cancer Society, because I kind of thought I can't talk about this stuff without letting you know what we're doing ourselves. So we have, yes, an About Us section, which takes you directly. That's us on the top left uh, over there, the yellow one. You've got um, in the middle, you've got an, an infographic uh, which tells you, you know, in very simple fashion, how the money is being spent. I also took up Concern because I wanted to do a third world um, charity. And, you know, there you are again, how charity donations are spent. And then the bottom one is actually site savers. And they do it in a different way, 94.5, 5 and 0 0.5. So you go straight to the website and you get it, you get it straight away. Now, this is what, this is transparency and this builds trust. And I really want to say this, like, as I say, the annual report, the statement of financial, uh, you know, the consolidated financial statement, all that is very important for people who want to root down. But, you know, we're in the Twitter area. Major news stories are being, really, are being broken and are being told to us using 145 character, 140 characters or less, you know? It's no longer acceptable, in my opinion, to ask people to scroll down through pages and pages and pages of an annual report or dig into consolidated accounts, which they don't really understand, and I will be finished in a minute. Um, it will also encourage journalists, by the way, uh, to do digging, because they'll wonder, why are you making it so difficult to find the information? Uh, is there something that you don't want to draw their attention to? 
Yes. And he's yeah, exactly, and he's 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 um, giggling away behind me. Yeah. Uh, things and the other thing is things happen in the best managed organisations. Things happen. And the other thing is questions get asked, and the media are perfectly entitled to ask questions, and you need to be able to answer them, and you can't again. No, that's the wrong. That, yeah, that's the, when the media come landing on your doorstep. You need to know how to. Ha you need to have a sense of how to deal with the media. And if you don't find somebody, if you don't, if you're not able to do that, if you're, you're not equipped to do that, well, then go and find somebody who is and who can, you know, protect you from those wolves. Don't whatever you do, this, and don't do this, right? Don't put it off. Do the training course. Get advice, use a professional if you have to, and have a plan. It's really important that you do, not only for your own sake, but for the sake of others in the sector as well. Because as we know, and I think of that cartoon again, if one of us is in the media for the wrong reasons, it affects us all uh, tremendously. And it's also important, and this is the last thing I'm going to say, is because public trust, as we know, is so vital to our mission. And from a foundation of trust, and from a foundation of integrity, then we can be the strong voice for those we speak for and work for and for the cause we stand for and the change that we want to see happen. Without that integrity and without that trust, we are weak and we are exposed. We need to be strong and we need to be heard. Then we're truly helping ourselves. Thank you.